Hi, in this video we're going to see how we can filter particular prefixes from being announced in LDP on Cisco iOS devices. Remember that by default, Cisco will generate labels for every single prefix that he knows about and he will advertise this information to his neighbors. You might encounter a situation where this is not particularly desirable. This is also not the default behavior of some of the other vendors where other vendors will typically just create labels for slash 32s, for example, and announce that information to the neighbors. So you might come into a situation where this is not desirable. For example, uh, imagine that your devices do not, don't have uh, the greatest possible capacity to store labels. Maybe your devices are, are small or the amount of labels that you have in your network is quite high and you want to reduce this. You have the possibility of filtering to make sure that the labels will still be generated. So the labels will still be generated, but you have the possibility of filtering what's actually announced to the peers. And you can do this by, you can do this globally in the sense of to all peers, or you can do this on a per peer basis. And that's what we're going to do here. What's, that's what we're going to see here. Let's take a peek at our topology. We have our topology, we have four P devices. We have three P devices. We're going to be focusing on, for example, router 2. This is the loopback of router 2, 10.100.2.2 slash 32. He has three other interfaces. You're going to be creating labels for those. Those labels are going to be uh, implicit null, basically saying to the other side, hey, so I don't have a to do a recursive lookup, pop that before you send it over. But let's say that you only want to announce a loopback. Remember what I said, maybe there's really no point for R1 or there's no point for R4, R3 to know about the other three directly connected interfaces. And you want to kind of reduce the amount of um, information in the LIV and in the LFIV. So how do we do that? Well, we do this, we can do this using standard access list. So we have that flexibility and then we can call them out with a particular command. So let's see how that's done. If we go here in router two in configuration mode, before we do, let's do a check. For example, if we go to router one and we do, we go here to router one and we do show MPLS LDP binding. Let's say, let's do an include just to make it a little bit cleaner. We do include live and we say 10, 100.2.2. This is what we're getting from, these are the this is the LDP information that we're getting from router two. You can see that for all of this, for all of these prefixes, he's sending us what's the label. These are the ones that he has directly connected to him. You see implicit null, implicit null there, but for other prefixes as well. So let's let's filter that a little bit. Let's filter that a little bit with our access list. And we can see the same information on R2, but this will not stop the generation of labels. Labels are still gonna be generated. So the command, the, the lib on router two will not change after I do this, but what will change is what actually gets announced over to the neighbors. So let's first create an access list. The standard access list will say IP access list. And it'll say standard. And I'll call that loopback zero, for example. We'll say here permit and we'll permit we'll permit the loopback of router two, which was 10.100.2.2. So we're gonna hear implicit deny at the end. So to do this we do we say no MPLS LDP advertise labels, and then we say MPLS LDP advertise labels, and we have the option of four. We call that access list that we defined previously called loopback zero. And here we have more options. This is, this is what I was mentioning about the fact that you can do this either for everyone or you can tailor it to be for a specific peer. But we're gonna do it for everyone. And with this, now if I check show MPLS LDP bindings, it's gonna look pretty much the same. You can see there that there's still labels being generated. But now if I go to router one, and do the same command that we saw before. See how now we're not matching anything. The only thing that we are matching is the loopback, which is what we wanted to achieve. So the only labels that we're learning from router two are how do we reach, how do we reach your loopback? And basically saying, hey, pop the label. 
So basically, this has limited the amount of information that we get from this particular neighbor. And if we repeat this in router 3 and we repeat this on router 4, we'll get the same result. Now, the only label information that he's sending is for that loop address that is what we wanted to achieve. So if we, for example, go to P3, we go to P3 and do trace route and do a trace route. Let's do the fancy trace route. We'll do trace route MPLS, say 10, 100.2.2 slash 32. We're going to see this that this is telling us that this goes to router 4. And then from router 4 to router 2, we have an implicit null. You can see that. See, see it here where it's telling us this is labeled 21. And then when this goes router 2, router 4 to router 2, this is actually being called implicit null. So this is, we, he's, getting, he's getting that information. That information is, hey, can you please pop the label and send me this on, on native IP because I don't want to do a recursive lookup. And that's what's actually happened. But if we try to do the same trace route to something else, like for example, like for example, uh, the interface that connects router two with router one, should be this one, should be 10.0.14.2 slash 32, saying that there's no label because, you know, as we saw there, now there's no label being announced for that. So this is not going via MPLS. And this is what we are getting here with uh, trace route as well. And though it would be good to actually double check that this is, this is the IP between them. So let's try to cancel that out. Do show IP interface brief. No, that should be 12. Should be 12. And let's see if we are lucky enough to cancel that. There we go. So with this, you see there, let's check it with, let's check it with the uh, trace route MPLS IP4 command. We see that there's no label. And there is a label between, there's label information between P3 and label information between P3 and router four, but there's no label to send this over to, uh, to send this over to actually router two, because router two is no longer generating that implicit null that we saw there. He's the only thing he's announcing is what I, we saw here from router one, which was this remote binding here of implicit null. And the, the label that we see there is a label that's been generated by router four. Router four, we're following that logic where they generate labels for everything they know about. So everything that's in the routing table, Cisco IOS will generate a label for. That's the label that router four is generated for. But router two is no longer generating a label for this. And this is basically how we can filter what particular labels are announced to what particular peers on Cisco IOS when we're trying to do filter that information with LDP. Because as I said, maybe your MPLS application doesn't require you to have labels for every single prefix, every single interface that you have in your core network. Maybe the loopback is good enough and you don't want uh, to, you don't want to overload your devices or you simply can't due to hardware constraints. And as I said, I think that's all for this particular video. As always, thank you for watching and please don't hesitate to leave your comments in the section below.